Welcome to the fourth video in this series on using Substance 3D Modeler in VR. This video will be going over the remaining sculpting tools, Build Up, Crease, Inflate, and Paint. The rest of the tools, similar to Smooth, will be mostly used to make smaller changes to the clay's surface, and all of them default as surface snapped. First here is the Build Up tool, found here. As the name suggests, you can get a layering effect over the surface of the clay. The palette options give you control over the hardness of the brush, but it can also be changed with left and right on the tool hand thumbstick. The A button, like with other tools, quick swaps between add and remove. Use build up to make more gradual changes to your surface form, or make subtle texture. Next up is the crease tool, which is a sub tool to the build up tool, found here. Crease will pull up and pinch a ridge on the clay surface. The resolution of the clay surface will make a noticeable difference here, and you may want to move a little slower to get a smoother result. Strength can be changed in the palette, and you can quick swap between pinching up and creasing in with the A button. The crease tool is great for emphasizing areas that need to be pinched, or for getting sharper edges. Next in line is the inflate tool, found here. It will continuously inflate the surface when the tool preview comes in contact with clay. You can change various settings, such as the intensity, or switching to a deflate mode. Press A to quick swap between inflate and deflate. At the bottom here is the paint tool, but you'll need to change the color for this one. So first pull up the color picker by hovering over it, then change the color using the tool hand trigger. There's various shapes to choose from, as well as settings such as hardness and rate. And like buildup, hardness can be changed with the tool hand thumbstick left and right. This was mentioned in the first video on sculpting tools, but all sculpting tools can be used in any placement mode. As an example, let's switch to freehand placement for paint, and now it behaves a little bit more like a paintbrush. If you want to switch back to the original color, or copy another, you can use the eyedropper option here, in the color picker. Just point at the surface you want to copy the color from, and press the tool hand trigger once. All of these tools have been used on a per layer basis, but you can use them across different layers as well. This is the case for all sculpting tools aside from clay. Let's switch to the select tool, or quickly exit editing by pulling back on the support hand thumbstick, and switch to erase with nothing selected. Notice there is no longer focus on editing just one layer, so the Erase tool can actually affect all layers at this level. As can Paint, and Warp, as an example. You can control which layers are affected this way through selection. If you select a handful of layers, then switch to a sculpting tool, all other layers will darken and be unaffected when you use a tool across multiple layers. Again, this works for all sculpting tools except for the clay tool. Remember that switching to the clay tool with nothing selected, there's no layer to put the clay into, so you're instead put into a state to quickly make a new one. The erase tool has a couple other subtool options as well. Up here at the top, there's split and crop. These both behave as if single setting is in use. Split will take anything that the red preview is covering and split it away into its own layer. This is useful as a quick way of splitting up one layer into multiple, especially if you accidentally built everything in one layer and wanted to move things independently. Crop will take anything the red preview is covering and crop that layer to only the overlap. While this can be used as a quick boolean operation, it's useful for cleaning up a layer that might have other bits floating around. Lastly, you have access to a couple of snapping guides. These are both being worked on and updated, so their behavior isn't final. The first is angle snap, which can be found here. While angle snap is active, any tool will snap orientation to 90 or 45 degrees. This also applies to moving things around with the select tool. And it affects layer orientation when making a new layer. There is also grid snap, which snaps everything to a grid and orients at 90 degrees. The grid changes size depending on how zoomed in or out you are. It also affects all tools, including how it resizes the clay tool.
and that will wrap up part four in this series on using Modeler in VR. If you'd like to learn how to use Modeler on the desktop, much of the functionality is the same, but there's also a separate playlist for the desktop. So feel free to check that one out. Link is listed down below in the video description. These first four videos should get you started on all of the basics you need for navigating Modeler and its tools. The videos after this will focus on one feature or concept, and it will be covered for both desktop and VR together. Next up, in part five, we'll dive into understanding resolution.